Stop the recording and so as I said, uh, we've got 15 pieces to look at um, and I get lost count on the number of artists, but we'll, I think I've got all the artists here that have something. Um, but we can always, if there's something that, I know that Janet's not coming, but if, any, if we go by someone who's not here, we can always come back later if they show up. So let me share my screen. Share my screen with that. How's that? Oh, fine. These are Ann Mitzen markers, and she's not here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go buy hers, and we'll come back. Now this one. It's mine. It's Cassie. That's right. <clears throat> That's okay. John's. That is so different, Cassie, from what you normally do. It's really nice. Yeah, thank yeah. you. I think your stuff, um, your stuff isn't nice. Oh. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. So it's collage, you know, paper on wood panel. This is actually my newest piece. And uh, I'm working a little bit bigger with the collage than I usually do. It's 20 by 20. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I... Originally, I wanted to, I wanted it to be a pink piece, and I had like the pinks in there and the, the lavender and the yellows, and it, it wasn't coming together. So I put those red, black and green pieces on and it, it just everything else just popped. Mm -hmm. It's called high jinx in red. Good. I, like it. I, I love like it. it. And yeah. you, you know what really makes this work? You see those, they're almost like on corners, these brown sections? Mm -hmm. That gives me them some dimension because because they're dark, they seem to recede, which pushes all the colors forward. Mm -hmm. You know, which I yeah. really, really like. I like the three-dimensional quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The pink, yeah. So Cassie, you did this on board. I've always had this question of ours. I haven't I just haven't asked it. I know that yeah. there's been work that people do on a single piece of plywood, for instance. Mm -hmm. How do you mount that? How do you present that? Okay, this is cradled panel, wood panel. Okay. So you know what that is? Yeah, I do. I do. I don't. So, okay. Well, it's um, a piece of hardwood, and then it's like it's like a stretched canvas. So there's a piece of hardwood on top and there's hardwood yeah, sides. It's like a frame around it. Yeah, okay, there you go. And it's yeah, yeah. so it's an inch and a half deep, you know, like a stretched canvas. Mm -hmm. But I I, mean, I've, seen, I've seen artists talk about doing work on just basically right. a sheet of plywood or a sheet of masonite or something like that. Right. And I've often wondered, well, how do you present that? You'd have to frame it. Yeah, I suppose you would, huh? Yeah, like I've done pieces on, in fact, the next piece that you're going to show of mine, it's done on canvas panel. Mm -hmm. So, you know, which is like, I think an eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch thick. And probably, yeah. Those have to be framed. Yeah, those, because they're, they're thin enough. I'm just thinking if you're working with, well, I guess if you're working with quarter inch pan, um, plywood, you could do it that way. Yeah. It's funny, I always, my, my new hero now, no, I haven't forgot about Mark Bradford, but my new hero, hero <laughs> is Robert Rauschenberg. Mm. Um, I just got his retrospective, which is like 900 pages long. And his work is just fantastic. And someone was asking the question, I think it was in the Getting to Know series, about what school of art is do we have today? And the answer oh, yeah. is kind of like we have a lot that of That was me. Them. Yeah, oh, that's right, Cassie, it was you. We have a lot of them. And I think the artist who's responsible for democratizing it was actually Rauschenberg because when up until him, you had painters that generally stuck to one medium. Rauschenberg comes along and he does paintings. He does collage. He does solvent images. He does, in other words, he starts to do all of these other things 
that other people then latch onto and create either create schools or they just die off. He's even done performance art. He's done sculpture. I mean, it's his work is just it's deep and it's wide and it's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Cassie, what did you use for adhesive there? I use golden soft gel. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's probably the best. Yeah, it's the best. The paper um, doesn't wrinkle and it doesn't tear. Golden so, soft. Yeah. You like that better than matte medium? Yeah, well, the gloss, matte can, um, if you, I mean, I'm only putting the gel on the back of the paper, but sometimes uh -huh. sometimes it gets onto the front mm -hmm. and, you know, matte can um, distort the image. So I use gloss when I'm, glu when I'm gluing it. And I, then I don't worry about it if it gets onto some of the other pieces. And then when it's done and dry, I varnish with golden polymer varnish, satin finish. Okay. And, and that evens the whole thing out. Wow. Gee, I hadn't heard about matte on top distorting the image, but then again, I haven't done many collages. I've only done a couple. Um, yeah. Yeah. They say that like, if you're going to put on multiple coats of varnish, mm -hmm. uh, it depends how many coats you're going to do, but like, like if you were going to do three coats of varnish, the first one or two should be gloss. If you put on that many coats of matte, you'll dull the image. It, obs it obscures it. Yeah. You know, yeah. 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 yeah, any kind of matte medium or matte varnish will dull the image because it's matte. I mean, there's a matting agent yeah. in it that will do what it's supposed to do. Yeah. But I hadn't yeah. thought about the idea of, I've used the gel gloss to attach them. I hadn't thought about putting the, you know, the archival varnish over them, which yeah. makes sense. I always thought you had to, I had to gloss over them. I'll use some kind of a glossy or a glossy or matte medium over them, but you really don't have to. Hmm. Hmm, that's good no, to no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't use gloss or matte medium, but the the golden polymer varnish is fabulous. You know, you you thin it out a little bit with water. I think it's four to one, four parts mm -hmm. varnish to one part water. I have some here. I've and just never used it. It's so self leveling. You know, even if I use like a crappy brush, I don't get any brush marks. Really? Oh, nice. yeah. That is nice. Yeah, yeah it's really nice. Tell me what that is again. Golden polymer varnish. Mm -hmm. Is that the UV varnish? Yes, it's UV. Yeah. yeah, it's probably the best archival varnish for acrylic anyway. Yeah. Now, my thing is I can never decide whether or not to put on an isolation coat. I don't think you'd need it for this. Really? But, but no, because from what I understand on isolation coats, um, it's more for a painted image mm -hmm. so that you put an isolation coat. Well, no, maybe you could do it for this because the reason for the real reason for an isolation coat is you want to be able to remove a top coat that dulls or gets dirty or whatever without right. it hurt, hitting, hitting anything underneath. Right. Um, yeah. I think that I, some value with I that. think I, sh I think I should, I didn't on this one, mm -hmm. but I think I probably should. Yeah. And Golden you, makes a nice isolation coat too. Although there's, yeah. there are some formulas out there that you can use too, but I, I don't like these personal formulas of, you know, well, Dr. Hyde mixing all the chemicals and saying, voila, I have an isolation coat. <laughs> well, yeah, even Golden though, you, I mean, you can buy the Golden isolation coat or they, they even say you can use gloss medium and thin it down for isolation. Yeah. yeah. Can you explain how isolation coat works? It's, um, it's a, well, okay, it goes on top of the piece. It's the first coat and it's permanent. So, and you put the varnish on top of that. The varnish is removable. Mm. So, but you can't remove the varnish unless you have an isolation coat. Because if you, if you don't have the isolation coat, it'll affect the, you know, you'll be removing the paint or the collage or whatever along yeah. with the the varnish. So the isolation coat protects the piece when the varnish is removed. So is the, is the isolation coat, is that, is that glossy or is that matte? You should use gloss. Gloss. Okay. Does, do they have a matte? No. I didn't think so. Okay. I was just wondering. Yeah. But Cause I do like a matte finish. 
Right. Because I, when I look around, I kind of see the world in a matte finish, except where I get reflection of light, but on something that's glossy. Yeah, Normally yeah I don't, I like the satin. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't like a glossy finish either. But like I said, you know, <sighs> you don't want to put on too many layers of matte. Mm, that's true. Well, you can go to my next. You can go to my next piece, Joe. <laughs> Here's the next one. Well I feel like I'm talking forever. Um, so, okay, so one of the um, themes for tonight was red, mm -hmm. and this is a piece I did last spring. I think you know more towards it was it's from my coronavirus series, and it's more towards the beginning um, of the year, mm -hmm. and it's called. It's made from the the envelope, the, you know, the Netflix envelopes uh -huh. that come in the mail. It's called Netflix binge. <laughs> do you still get those, Cassie? I do. I, I get, I have streaming and DVD. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I can't remember the last time I had a DVD player, to be honest. It's like, <laughs> I'm just too much of a techie. <laughs> and again, this is a collage. This is on Canvas panel, paper mm -hmm. collage on Canvas panel. And this one just sold. In fact, the collectors that just arrived FedEx today, and they called me this afternoon, and they love it. So that was, oh, wow. that was kind of nice. What size is it? Uh, Sixteen by twenty. I'll tell you again, the depth in this is terrific. Yeah, it's like I'm looking in a tunnel. Yeah, great perspective. Yeah, composition is bang on too. How did you promote it that you got the buyer? Well, these, I have a handful of collectors who buy a lot of my work, and this is one of those. You know, they're on my mailing list. They get my newsletter, and so they see, you know, new stuff. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, see, for a while, uh, and I was doing a lot of abstracts at that time, but I had uh, taken a little class using the 3D glasses, mm -hmm. and it just became, I was just impressed. So absorbed with the whole thing and it started painting and i took the class and i came back and i said i put them on and here was one of my abstracts and the boy the red and all of it just popped out you could just almost reach for it and it was really wonderful when young people would come in my studio who obviously were bored they wanted to be doing something else and i say here put these glasses on but i'm thinking so strongly of your work especially the one before if you put those 3d glasses on it would just, it would just <laughs> yeah. the room. and you can order them online um yeah i've seen, I've I don't seen have it right now but it, it is really uh so i would and they were red so i would put them on while i was painting and my uh musician son walked in one day and I had on this crazy music and these red 3D glasses and he says, mom, maybe you've gone too far. <laughs> I got over the edge. But anyway, it is kind of a, a useful tool when you're, you're doing this, but because the contrasting of the colors, it just shows if it's working or not. So where'd you but take the class that you had the 3D glasses? Oh, it was at Studio Channel Islands. It was just a workshop and Lucia oh, Morales gave it. So it was fun. So now I give the glasses out to all the kids that come through and I have to reorder from time to time. But <laughs> it opens up the world. I mean, people don't think they're artistic and then they see something like that and you kind of explain mm -hmm. how color works and uh, opens their eyes. So. You know, that's where I think the value of collages with young, young people. I think that, you know, if you expose them initially to working with collage, you, you can really develop a quick interest in art um, rather than putting a watercolor brush in their hand. Yeah, I've never done a collage. Though I'm fascinated watching all this. this is... Yeah, I've just done a couple and I absolutely love the process. I really yeah, it's do. Re it's really fun. It's very freeing. It's it so, much, so much easier than painting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have some neighbor kids that are working in slime. Does that go on, on two dimensional things? <laughs> They're making slime from scratch. I don't know what the ingredients is. My granddaughter does that too. Mm. I think it's a thing with the kids. Yeah. Is that something you can hear to a work of art and paint over? I don't know. I don't know. Oh. All right. I mean, I think you this is Janet it Black's piece. That sounds like a good idea. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh. Invent something new. Janet does some amazing 
collage work. Oh, that is nice. And I don't know if these, I wish she was here because I don't know if these white dots have been stitched on or because she does a lot of stitching along with gluing. Looks like paint, just little touch. Yeah, huh, it. Michelle, it does. Yeah, like little dots. Yeah. That's but I'll tell beautiful. you, that's, that takes a lot of time and patience to get those dots just the way, you know, spaced prep, but right? You, yeah. But, but you, you've seen when she'll do like uh, the. Listen, the tiniest little girl's got patience. She's oh, amazing. yeah. Oh, yeah. Really does. Absolutely. I love her work. Yeah. And it's red. It yeah. is red. <laughs> Is it abstract? I'm trying to get a handle on that. You know, Christine, I meant to answer your email and I've been so darn busy. You know, this would be, this is an abstraction of a cat. Okay. Abstract, abstract can be representational. In other words, it can, it, you can see representation in it, but it's an abstracted representation. And like you were thinking about doing something in a oh, surrealist boy. fashion. In a sense, I've always seen that surrealism is like the door next, the, you know, it's like right next door to abstract painting. So, I mean, it's pretty close and I'd love to see something like that. Yeah, I saw arguments online back and forth. Oh God, yeah. If you go, that's a rabbit, that's a rat hole you don't really want to confused. Go. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I've been wondering that too, because I got turned down by, from uh, joining the um, Santa Barbara art, what is it? The, the abstract art collective because it looked too much like a landscape, but it wasn't supposed to ever be a landscape. It was like looked like a scene from Mars, if anything. And they won't they won't take anything that remotely resembles a landscape. And it, I think that's kind of odd. It, you know, they they had you know I'll I'll give them their due. They do have some very good abstract artists in that group. But, oh yeah. You know that seems to be awfully elitist to me you know i mean at what point do you say that something is too representational well you know? that that's non objective non objective work has you know nothing recognizable in it exactly yeah but ab abstract is a much yeah abstract is a much broader category exactly and that's why yeah. i have a problem with them saying that your abstracted landscape is too landscapey you know? yeah yeah I'll, I'll show that one next time because yeah bring that i'd like to see that yeah i was like really stunned now, to me oh, there would be i could think of a lot of reasons why they wouldn't want my work but that shouldn't be one of them i wouldn't necessarily <laughs> accept that i had a thought that anytime i paint a tree especially a deciduous tree it's abstract you know, I'll tell you something. There's a there's a, there's a very good um, abstract painter who is his name is Brian Rutenberg, who has a great by the way he's got a great YouTube channel, and um, one of the things he does in his abstract work he's he's is like obsessed with trees, but he's a tremendous abstract painter. So if it's are you in fact I'm gonna do is I'm I'm gonna find him on YouTube. I'll put the link in the. Let's see. Yeah, he's he's out of New York. Love this cat. Yeah, I just yeah, yeah. Both, it's really nice. Both of Kathy's. I just, you know, I like anything Kathy does. So and this, is this, this is Janet. This is Janet. This is Janet. Yeah, I know. I was just saying along with that, I like both of Cassie's. They always evoke something in me. But yeah. Always like, mm -hmm. I love the shirt or whatever that is, uh, the white music. It, it, it's, it's like, like it's like a, it almost looks like a, like, the, like a white breast piece yeah. on a hat. When I was saying up here, here's Anne. Click yeah. me. No, no, up here. See those? On the top? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. I, I thought maybe it. they were playing cards that he was wearing, but. It looks well, like you're in musical notes. I yeah, musical know. notes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about if we don't click and just put me on? Show great video. Hey, Ann Mitzenmark is here. All right, we, we do, we're going to go back to your stuff, Ann. Glad you could oh, make thank, it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to take this off. All right. Now this. Can anybody guess whose work this? Is? Take sure. a minute. 
<laughs> Pull Kate. Kate. Kate Higgins. Yep, it's Kate. Pull a chair over. You know what? I'll be back. I actually, I, I'm working on an abstract. Did he say he's uh, not Acrylic painting, but I wasn't, I wasn't liking it, so I, so I decided to do uh, a couple watercolors to get some ideas. And this one, he does share screen. That's what we want. Um, this one is sort of looks like topography to me, okay, so like a map. Yeah, so, so I um, call it. Uh, what did Those I call things? it? We did. Yeah. Wait, it's not. We for, it didn't ask for audio no. or video. We want the audio. Go this way. See. Yes. View options. Is somebody trying to log in or something? Yeah, I'm trying to, it's Ann, I'm trying to log in. All right, let me see, let me see if I can help you out. Okay, let's see. Um, let me stop the share here for a second and see if I can help you out. I see you. Yeah, you're okay. in, but your video is off. Right, the video is off. How do I get it? So on? how do I get my video on? What are you using? Are you using a laptop or a, what are you No, using? I got a, a, a computer. Yeah, it's a laptop. It's okay, a laptop. On the, on the lower laptop. left hand, on the lower left hand side of the zoom screen, you should see something that says stop video or start video, a little camera over there. There it is, start video. Yeah. Right, click on that. There you there are. There I am. Ta da. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. There you are. Thank you, dear. Right. Now we'll go back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Are these, res, Joe, are these the low res, Joe? Are these the low res images, or did you? No, I, no these were the high res. Okay. Um, anyway, so this is um, uh, go this way. Can you make it bigger, Joe? Yeah, I can. I thought I sent larger ones. Well, yeah. you know, I'm going to double check because I could have sworn I took your last ones. To, let me check just to be sure. I can't find the email now. Well, it does it doesn't matter. It's, uh... <clears throat> well, Kate, this is very nice. I think it's typical of your work. I love the um, contrasts of soft colors, sharp edges. Uh, really uh, washed areas and then details. I love, you know, all that, all those contrasts and it comes together really well. Um, I think it's very, it seems abstract. I don't know if you feel like it is. No, it seems it's, abstract. I, I, yes, I feel it's abstract. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of, but it, I, kind of, it kind of surprised me that it turned out looking like a map. <laughs> whenever. It kind of almost felt like I should. This should be part of a fantasy story. It looks like a COVID a virus mask on some animal. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, I wanted to use these colors and see how they work together, and because uh, yeah. I'm trying to do something in acrylics. Anyway, Joe, yeah. we can go to the next one if you want. Well, I was just going to see. I want to make sure. Very intriguing. I like the line work. Yeah, case line work is great. All right, now. Watches, I love that. You know, oh, there we go. Oh, whoop. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back and see if this makes a difference. Well, this is a nice break from what's going on in the news. Oh my God, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> this is um, called Below the Surface. So this is just another one I was um, 
experimenting. Um, I, I love it. I love the colors. Are the li I, is the line work ink? Yes. Okay. And I wanted to use a lot of red just to see what would happen. Um, or reds. Um, it has a, a feeling of something hidden. Mm -hmm. Looks like an element of sky in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And something growing, um, mm -hmm. maybe something on, um, well, something below the surface. <laughs> yeah, there's just, in, I, in this area in here, it seems like it's, like, it's almost like this is being disturbed, like something's trying to break through. This reminds me of the horizontal you were talking about going up. Hmm. I'm not sure what. Oh. It's so heavy on the, yeah, I think it has to be like it's be, that. It has to be it's this way, yeah. So yeah. heavy, yes. No, actually, I liked it sideways. I liked it this way. Yeah, I do too. You liked it this way? There you go. That's. Um, I liked it the other way, sideways. Yeah, me too. Like that? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay. There's this foot I'm there. Falling from the sky. <laughs> the only reason I don't like this is because this line here is right smack in the middle. Okay. You know, if this had been like here or here, maybe. Okay. I think mostly here, I think. My, it would. Compositionally, I think it would look Actually, a little different. not the middle, really. It's, uh... So that's the high res. I want to go sh take a look at the other one, Kate, to see if it makes a difference. I'm just, this is now I'm doing testing, so. Okay. Joe, just to let you know, I need to leave at 515. Oh, yeah, okay. We can go a little faster. We can let's go to the next one. Oh, this is uh, this it. now this looks like it's low res too, because it was I sent a lot anyway, but that's lovely. This is this is my 2021, although it oh, might wow. be too it might there. It might be too hopeful. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we'll be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> there is a way to go now. <laughs> Well, there is something dark here, <laughs> along with the um, excitement. It looks like under under the sea. Um, yeah, it does look very marine. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's a great, great look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The little critters crawling around. Yeah, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Oh, I really like that. I think this is yours, right? Yes. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. Um, okay, well, they, I think um, this, <laughs> I, I just started this yesterday. Um, mm. And I looked, um, I think it was Cassie who, um, I, are you part of, um, oh, I can't hear you now. Are you part of the Artful Home website? Yes. So I went out there and actually a friend of ours, uh, I used to know him a long time ago is Mike Kozeski, who's on uh, that website as well. But anyway, there was another artist. I really liked her work. Um, and I don't really have, I don't think my own style that I would say this is my style for abstract, but I really enjoy it. I love it. I, I really enjoy doing it. But I just thought, okay, you know, I just see her free uh, brushwork, mm -hmm. um, very loose, very free brushwork. And I really liked it because I, I was tending to be more geometric um, in my shapes. And mm -hmm. so I just kind of freed up and, and, and just uh, did these brush, uh, brush, looser brushwork on it. And um, I did a little bit of collage in the upper left corner, mm -hmm. um, that little white, oh. um, rectangular thing and then on the bottom where uh on the bottom right but again like like you were saying cassie it 
I used matte, I did use medium and it did start wrinkling. And so I pulled it off and what was mm. left was some of this wide, I painted over it, but you know, I kind of like the texture. So I just sort yeah. of left some of it exposed, but um, uh, uh, anyway, it just, I, I just kind of had fun with it and um, tried to be looser in my brush strokes and brushwork and, uh, and marks and just kind of being free to make marks uh, and it kind of emerged as more Hello. of a um, Hello. stormy look. Yes. And I just thought um, instead of like trying to say, I, I, I want it to be completely abstract, like there's nothing recognizable. I thought I'm just gonna embrace the fact that it's could be kind of stormy. So I ended mm -hmm. up calling it that, but um, I usually just like my abstract work not to have any reference to Mm -hmm. you know anything representational but anyway it was fun doing it I just love doing the layers and the brushwork and the marks and uh just layer and layer and layer and so uh, it was fun to do this is really nice I, I can see where you had fun with this for sure and I like I like the little dance of that like they are a lot yellow in there too I think that really Oh, yeah. Works well against the coolness of some of the other colors. Well, some of it oh, is um, pa uh, oil pastel. Some of the some of the um, line work is oil pastel. What about this here, Kath? Right in here. That is that's just acrylic paint. It's paint. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like this and this and these little yellow marks because they're they're warm against this generally cool palette, and it does not. It works nice. And the, you know, obviously, I love dripping, and this is just great. I really yeah, the drip, the drips in the rectangular uh, white really contrast nicely with the big bold blue strokes. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call that a cool palette. What's Let's, happening here? Those um, blues know. are those blues are very warm. Yeah, you think. Yeah. I was just thinking in general, they generally blues are, I know what you're saying though. They're a warmer no. blue, sure. Right. What size? Uh, it's 20 by 24. Oh, you can't get nice contrast in here too, Kathy. You get a Thanks. lot of good, good value steps for sure. Thanks. Yeah, there's not much more to say besides just kind of attacking the canvas. So um, it works. I'm telling you, it's and it yeah. is very different mm -hmm. from your other stuff, which is very good stuff too. But I really like this. Hey Joe, like I could see where you had fun with it though. Yeah. For sure. Joe. Yeah. Joe, I the the picture switched off. I still have you and all the people, but I I'm trying to launch it again, and it won't launch. Well, I'm sharing a screen that everyone else should be able to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me stop it and bring, let me stop it and I'll try, I'll bring it back up. Let me see if that works. Hey, Tom Zanuck, how are you? Hi, sorry for being late. I was on another call. And Tom, you're, you're in Massachusetts, right? Uh, no, Santa Monica. Oh, I thought no. you were on, okay. <laughs> close. Okay. Close, yeah. I got it. Only 3,000 miles away. I got it, Joe. Okay, let me go back here. How's that? I got it. Okay. So now we move into this is I think is Kimberly Ann's, right? Yeah. Nice. Thank yeah. You. Nice that's red. Part of it. That's only a close up so that you can see the the pearlescent paint. Okay. Because what I did was I um. See that's the bigger shot, Kimberly Ann. Is this the bigger shot here? Uh -uh, there was one. There's those were two were sent later. Keep going. Okay. There should be one that has the whole piece in it. Because there was a lot of because there's a lot of white that you don't see up more. On up this way? Uh-huh. Okay. Those were just the two close-ups. But what happens with the they're fine tech pearlescent watercolors. The problem with them is when you photograph them, if you don't get really close in the right light. You can't see any of the sparkle. Mm, yeah. 
I, I can see it. I can see it in this picture. Yeah, for it's sure. Pretty. That's because it's the partial picture and I zoomed in on it. And it's crooked because of how I had to take it because of the light. Yeah. Uh, maybe you could use some glitter nail polish if you wanted to add glitter. <laughs> Uh-huh. That's an interesting thought. Well, anyways, I just wanted to work in red. I, I never do the um, mm -hmm. monthly theme, and I thought, oh, let's try red, because red is not a color I work with. Mm -hmm. I don't like reds. I don't like oranges. I don't like browns. But so it was a good challenge for me to work with it. Sure, sure. Well, this is nice, and I love the diagonal, you know, composition on it, too. Well, actually, it goes sideways. Um, I forget which way. Oh, so okay. This, I can't see. <laughs> what you're looking at on your left is the top. Oh. Can like that? Uh-huh. OK. But I decided to switch it around when I photographed it. Gotcha. I can see the sparkly on that. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I mean, all, all of this, I mean, it looks like little mica flakes. Yeah. And this was a project you worked on, right? Yes, but if you go to the photo before that, you'll see it without the words. Because I actually worked on it without words. First. Oh, okay. I don't think I have a shot of it without the words. I think I sent it to you. I can check, but I don't recall that. And, uh, let me see what I got here. But anyways, these are um, two and a half by three and a half, what they call artist trading cards. That's why uh -huh. there's lines. So I kept them where the lines are and I trade them with people for their cards that um let's see do I have one that somebody else did I should like one of my friends did this one can you see that oh yeah okay so I trade these type of cards for whatever it is that I'm doing here's one that I just did oops oh there's the camera <laughs> there you go so I like doing these little ones. They're kind of a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for some reason, Kimberly, and I just, I just got the one with words. I'm just checking my email. Um, oh, wow. And I have a better shot than this. I want to, I want to get to it. I think you do. I think you have a shot of the whole thing. Let me go and... Oh, that's pretty. Let me go find it. Hang on a second. Um, this one. All right. That. Yeah, that's it. Ta -da. Ta -da. That's the entire painting. You know what? I'm going to recommend you guys to do. I. I Generally, you're responding to an email of mine, and you're including the images. Uh huh. And they and I've got like eight or nine emails, and I I think I lose track of some of these. Send them to me like as separate email from you. It'll be oh, easier okay. for me to find them all. Okay. Because I'm getting old, you know. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I see it like this, Kimberly, and that's really impressive. Yeah, see, I like it like that. Like I said, the um, the other one was just a close-up because here you lose all of the sparkle. Mm -hmm. You do, yeah. You lose it in the photograph, yeah. It's still a nice composition and nice work, though. I love the brushwork in this. Thank you. Thank That's you. Good. All right, let me go back. And... There you go. Go all the way to Anne's. You guys seeing this? No, keep going. That's it. That was those, yeah, those three. Okay. 
So these are from Anne. Very nice. And I can flip this <laughs> like that. That's an interesting floral pattern for sure. Yeah. The colors are nice. You can almost see a wolf's head in there in that abstract. <laughs> <laughs> I never sketch anything. I just put my fingers into the brush and put pet, pet paint and there I go. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Looks like some bird of paradise in there too. I enjoyed it. I liked it the way you first had it. So if I go, you say, I think I had it, my move. Go to the left. Or... Like this? Yeah. Yeah, I think I do too. Because I like the way this curve comes down this way. Yeah. Uh -huh. and it brings your eye in here and brings you around. Yeah. I, I like it better that way. No, I do too. Now that I see it, I do too. Huh. Yeah. Can I still leave the name on the side though? Uh huh. You can do anything you want, sure. Your painting, mm -hmm. your I like, picture. I like it better. Mm -hmm. I do too. It has a little more meaning. Mm -hmm. huh. you know, I, if, I really if, if you really want to get rid of it, you could just go over it with some gesso. You'd be okay. Okay. Yeah. Ah, thank nice you. Like that. I have found that people like abstracts different ways. So now I sign them on the back, and I said, you know, now you have four yeah. paintings instead of one. Yeah. This do it whichever way you want. So this that's one, what I do, Pat. I don't put my name on the front. Yeah. Okay. Good, good to know. This is one I never even. After I was finished with it, I see birds in it. Little chicken, chicky. Oh yeah. <laughs> birds. They do. That the body shapes are like these. Little look like bird body shapes. Yeah. Oh, like ducks. I'm looking at it differently than when I saw it before. A lot of movement in this too. You can see my favorite colors. Did you yeah, do a lot of scraping? With you're a Christmas. You're a Christmas artist, eh? With the red and the green. <laughs> I, I think in the next one is the same. Oh, that's nice. Hmm. I like this. Yeah. This one I like of all mine. In fact, this is one of the first ones I ever did. And if you ask me what, how, and what did I use? God, it's, there's a, here's a question I ask. Let's say I like something like this and try to remember, well, what did I do? And what did I use? Did you ever write about it? How did you do it? What you've used, what colors, what have you? You know, I actually do. I actually keep a journal on what, what, I, what I put into something because I'll forget. Yeah, I have no, I can't remember it. I used. I didn't have to worry about my paintings from last year because I just gessoed them all over. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh. This is interesting. Yeah. It's not too bad for a novelist, is it? No, no it looks no. good. Great texture. Yeah, the textures are wonderful. I love texture. Mm hmm. Well, let me go back and find. Get back to. Let's see. I think we were at Sandy's. Yeah. And this is One, Sandy Keedman's. Yeah. That's lovely. Soft. Yeah, I started yeah. that before you said do a red monochromatic. I was already working on this. So no, it's fine. I mean, if, if you haven't figured it out by now, I mean, the challenges yeah. are kind of loosely based. It's just to keep give people a, something to shoot at. But I want to have an open category so we can bring work in that we're working on and get some feedback on it. It's lovely, soft and yeah. gentle. But damn it, Sandy, it's a, it looks like a landscape. Mm -hmm. uh, that one definitely <laughs> does. Yeah, but that for sure is it's not really very abstract, but it has a real Asian feel to it, too. Beautiful. That's very expressionistic. I love it. Yeah. I could picture some stork-like birds walking in there. And mm -hmm. I tried to paint a little duck in the by the tree on the right, and it looks stupid. So I, I, <laughs> you don't, I didn't you do don't a very good job on that. So I just I don't know if you've ever seen it. photographs of the cranes at um in Hokkaido. 
the yeah. northern yeah, side. Yeah, that would look good in there. This would, that's what this reminds me of. And that would look fantastic in here, yeah. But I think this, yeah. this kind of gives me that same impression, these being kind of like wings and a head from the, you know. But again, very, very impressionistic. It's really nice. Just lovely. It's a little bit, uh, you can't really tell here, but the, what looks like it might be a water but mm -hmm. in the center is, I painted it with higher gloss. Um, you know, there, there's, it's glossier, but I don't know if it shows in the picture. Yeah, it, does it, does. Yeah. it looks like more like a reflection. Yeah. Sandy, what size is this? Um, 16 by 20. Okay, that's good size. <clears throat> That's something I would love on my wall. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, for sale. No. <laughs> it can be yours. That is really nice. <laughs> Thank you. That's the only one I did for this uh, this week because I got sidetracked. <laughs> yeah, with all the holidays and everything, I think everybody's. I, I actually took an art vacation for a month. I'm going to start back up next week when I go to class. So. I just got to a point in the last semester where I learned so much that I had to just say, take some time and just kind of let it sink in. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Incubation time. Yeah, I got, it was like I had three pieces and I was just stressing out how to finish these three. And then I finally said, OK, don't worry about it. Give yourself where, are you going a break. To, where are you going to class, Joe? Actually, I think we've got some classmates here. I, um, it's Santa Barbara Community College. Oh, uh huh. And it's an online program in abstract painting. Who's, um, it, it, who's the, the teacher? The instructor is Laura, Laura Denny. Oh, yeah. And uh, Jill Sattler used to teach it. And Jill's become a good friend of mine. Um, and she's a tremendous pa abstract painter. That woman is incredible. Jill? Uh, but Laura's also a very good teacher of technique, which is what I really needed. Um, I know, I think Lynn's in the course. Lynn Dell. I just signed up for that. Did you? Yeah. Well, okay. I'm trying to. I'm having trouble. Oh God, I know. Pipeline is not the easiest. It thing wouldn't to... take the pipeline. Wouldn't. I know. Wouldn't I know. accept my uh, password because I. It was a previous password, and I haven't taken a class in this past year. Well, so. hey Sandy, where is want, that? I I've got the link, the Zoom link to the to the class next week. Uh -huh. I'll send it to you and you can come and talk to Laura and she'll get it she'll get it straightened out for you. Oh, that would be great. Really good that way. So would you send me that also? Marilyn? Ann. Oh, Ann, okay. Sure. Absolutely. So it's not it's an online class, right? It's a no, Zoom no. class. Zoom. And she, like I said, she's a she's a really good teacher of technique. I, the, the thing that I learned in her class, which is like my head went kaboom was the whole concept of layering your painting. Because mm -hmm. I had looked at, you know, people like um, Diebenkorn's work and some of these other abstract painters. And I, and I always thought they painted a la prima one level, you know, like one. And so I was painting that way. Mm -hmm. And then she, she opened up the whole concept of layering. And I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> this, is how, this is how you need to paint. And my painting really has taken off quite a bit after learning that. I still got to, that's a, something I'm still working with, but that was a huge, huge learning win for me. So do you mix uh, acrylic with some mediums to thin it out and layer? Sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. I yeah. always use mediums. I love to play with them. I do too. I had Irma Cabot at UCSB years ago and she taught us a lot of that. Now, Sherry Garwood is here. I like that. And this is Sherry's painting. Mm, I love the colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Can you make it larger? Yep. Hmm. It's on the uh, ocean. Sherry, you mm. want to speak to it? Uh, OK. I'm actually just trying to move into abstract mm -hmm. and I don't really feel it's going to be my best thing to go non-objective. Mm -hmm. You That's know, fine. I like to draw, but I don't want to just paint things. I love design and composition. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and believe it or not, design and competition, composition elements, all the design elements are needed in abstract painting, even if even the non-objective. Oh, yeah, know, yeah, more so, right. Um, but if I find it, you know, really challenging to get the um, subject matter in there, and also really good design and mm -hmm. composition. I tried to get a lot of layering, you know. Yeah. Push, push and pull. Sure. <laughs> um, a lot of depth. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. It was one of my first attempts recently to just kind of change direction. I, I said in my email to you, um, Joe, that I have been teaching art for about twenty years, and you know, you, I've had to mostly just do subjective stuff. People want to learn how to draw, how to paint things and still lives and landscapes and oh, animals and portraits you know, and I can do all that but you know you chat for 10 minutes and I mm -hmm. wanted to um just you talk about you know, get away from that for a while and, and explore sure. something on my own now that I don't have my teaching job right now so I'm free to try these things it's, it's really hard to get started so I thought yeah. joining a group like this would kind of motivate me a little bit more so Sherry, where did you teach? McGrory Art Center in Tahanga. Okay. Yeah, mostly there. Um, mm -hmm. I actually live in Tahanga and stay, and my studio is in Ventura. So I stay in Ventura half the week or so and mm -hmm. sleep on a boat. <laughs> so I paint boats sometimes. <laughs> Well, you know, I'll tell you, you can do abstract seascapes and abstract, if you, you know, if you went to Google and Googled abstract seascapes and abstract landscapes, you'd probably get a ton of ideas of where you could go with your work. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Now, now that's a great start, though. I like yeah, it. This. Is. It is. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have like done a few bayou. What? It feels like we're in the bayou somewhere, you know. Oh, yeah. It, this the colors me are a little, green that green is a little bit more intense than I really like, uh, you know, I always like to mute down that green a little bit, but uh, I didn't want it to get too dark. So I, I've been doing like some fish paintings and stuff that's um, trying to also have some parts that show and some that recede back, you know, within the, the large fish, even though the fish takes up most of the canvas. And uh, I didn't send you, I didn't know how many pictures you wanted, so I only sent one, but. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can submit as many as you'd like. Yeah, I'm just trying to explore and find my own voice within a more abstract mm -hmm. kind of style. I'm just. I'm trying to find this German painter. Here's... Hmm. Uh, I think I think the shapes work really well together, and it's kind of narrative. Like I don't know what the narrative is, but it feels very narrative. Like you're in, you're you're seeing something, you know, but in a mm -hmm. in in a, in a deconstructed way. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's really interesting. And I like the shapes uh, that you've created. Oh, I love the composition too. It's, it takes you right back into it. It's, oh, I appreciate that. Out of the water at certain times, you just get these emotional feelings and that's what that brings to me. Yeah, this one was just kind of yeah, like throw the paintings, the paint down in layers and then see what I could see in it. And the, most of the time I tend to look for subjects that having to do with the ocean and boats and stuff lately, that's what I'm into. So, um, I, I mean, I've also been very interested in faces a lot over the years, but I haven't really done a lot of face type paintings in an abstract way. But I might start exploring that. And, I like to use my imagination sometimes when I'm looking at abstract work. And to me, that looks kind of like a sea creature that's partying. <laughs> yeah. That's great. One of them just jumped out of the... No. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, I did some watercolor. 
I did a, a few watercolor paintings where I actually start out with somewhat of a form after layering paint. And then just as I see other forms within the whole, whole canvas, um, doing negative paintings around, negative paint around the form so that they kind of glow through. I'll, I'll have to turn that one in so you can see it. It's not really abstract, but it looks like a lot of patterns at first until you look up close and then you see all kinds of sea creatures <laughs> filling up the entire page. Mm -hmm. So what I did was if you look in the chat, there's a German painter that you reminded me of. His name is oh. Pears Kirkaby. Mm -hmm. So okay. I, I, I put a link in there to one of his pages on artsy and you can take a look at some of his work um it was it just reminded me of something that i had seen in jill's class you know, a couple years ago and for those i mentioned brian rutenberg's youtube channel um and that also actually sherry you could take a look at his work i think would be interesting to you as well that's his youtube channel right there and his name is Brian Rutenberg. So that's the work for this this month. That, that was very, very good. Yes, very good. Yeah. So what do we want to do for next month for challenges? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh no. How about work on pre print pre printed paper backgrounds like sheet music, um sheets from books in different languages, um sheets from the one of those big dictionary encyclopedias and work you with want to Kimberly, that's an interesting idea, but do you want to paint on it or do you want to do a collage piece with it? Collage on them or paint onto them. Yeah. I did a portrait of myself with one as the background. Well, let's, let's widen it out a bit and, and let's, how about suggesting we do something that reflects music, that's musical? Because yeah, I'm an oil painter, I'm not a collage artist. Yeah, I, I want, I that's why I mean, Pat, I don't want to narrow the topic. I'd rather go wider and let people do no. collage if they want to. Oh, they see, okay, what I was trying to say is I actually use that for the backgrounds and paint on them. Yeah, that's fine. You could do that. I mean, if we, but I think if we have a general topic of music or musical, okay. then we can do whatever we want to, to uh, just kind of bounce okay. off that idea. I like that. Good. Nice Good. thought. So music or yeah. musical, and what would be the, what would be another one? Dancing. What was that? Dancing, movement. Mm -hmm. Movement. Movement. That that would be interesting. Yeah. Everybody in this group is so good at showing those kinds of things. Yeah. How about insurrection? Oh, jeez. <laughs> no. Oh, my. <laughs> Sedition. Treason. There's enough for that to that today. <laughs> My God! You had to remind me. I was enjoying this. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. It's on my mind. Uh, but then we do also have Georgia. Thank you, Georgia. Yeah, I know. So it wasn't such a bad day. Right. Um, right. So, yeah, let's do music. And hey, Pat, what do you have? Do you have any ideas along these lines for a challenge? Pardon me. Do you have any ideas along these lines for a challenge? Um, well, I just like, the, you know, the expression of color, and it doesn't have to necessarily be any particular color, but how do you translate color into the composition of an abstract? Okay. Highlighting, highlighting a, a color, you don't, want to, you don't necessarily want to do monochromatic, but highlighting... Oh. Mm -hmm. Any color though, but I like the color because I'm a colorist. So mm -hmm. What if we were um, to just do something we haven't done before? Try That's something. an interesting challenge, yeah. I mean, yeah. a different. 
uh, just something we haven't done before. Something Take that, a different approach. I did something once, Joe. I painted on um, aluminum foil, and it came <laughs> out fabulous. Well, that would that could fall under doing something you know you haven't done yeah. before. Paint on a different substrate, um, use different colors. Um, and if you do it on aluminum foil, get the larger foil. Don't get the smaller roll. Get the larger mm -hmm. roll. Word to heavy the duty too, right. Heavy duty. Uh, and you can crinkle it if you want. And if you uh, crinkle it with your fingers and you paint on it, it it's very hard to see. Yeah. Or you can crinkle it after you've painted. Or you don't have to crinkle it at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, the green for Joe, I like all, all of us work in different mediums and different ideas, mm -hmm. but the one overlying challenge would work with all of these things. So, because I work on canvas or have worked on plywood. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my experiments, I took, I do photography too, and I took a photograph of my uh, palette after I was through painting because it actually was much more interesting than the painting I was working on, the way the colors all swirled together. And I've done a whole series and it's called Fractured Palette. And some are 48 by 48 and some are smaller, but they've all been very popular and have sold in their homes right now. But I just started out with an accidental thought because I'm not an abstract artist. That gave me the, the step forward to take it into an abstract form so it was very realistic it was my palette but when people see them they say well that's a looks like you're overground looking down or is there, mm -hmm. they all find something in it but it's actually yeah. the way i mix the paint around on the palette so the other thing we could do that'd be kind of wide would be to pick something like a just pick a word pick a word and then respond to it that's great for an abstract inspiration you know, and we've always had, we always have the open category too. So, next month is Valentine Month of Love. <laughs> Good point. You know, Pat, um, Sylvia Golden, I don't know if you know her, she does a lot of um printmaking, and a lot of times she will take pieces of her palette and cut them out and she'll frame them or she'll sign them. Uh, I've done that out. Um, I do that with paintings that don't work too. <laughs> yeah. Up pieces and take the parts that work. Uh huh. Make them an abstract. I don't have much money, so I just use gesso on top of mine. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> <laughs> so I just <laughs> reuse them. Do you know what, Joe? There is a um a group. I don't know if they're in Oxnard or Ventura called Buy Nothing, and they're on Facebook. And what it is, is your neighbors in your neighborhood, they give a lot of things away. And like, I give away my extra um, art supplies and people have given me canvas and I've given them paints and it's a nice little exchange. So if you're on it, sometimes you'll find something that you need. So it's called Buy Nothing? Uh-huh, and it's okay. on Facebook. It's a Buy oh, Nothing that's great. group. Yeah. The buy I'll Nothing group. <laughs> So oh, we've got uh, the open, we've got music or something musical. If we did a word, then we can also do something like Pat was suggesting, because if you pick a word, you're going to have to take a color that's going to have to support that. So you'll have to figure out a color palette that will support whatever word you're trying to rep to, to you know, to get across as a feeling. Peace or love or whatever and yeah if you want to do love and it's valentine's day i get it you can do that i'm, not, I'm, not, love. I mean, I'm not doing it either but it's like no, i'm not doing it um, <laughs> yeah we just did red yeah yeah um how about doing something that's anti-composition in uh, other words off balance and to me <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, um, I think within um, music, within music, you could do like lyrical, staccato, rhythmic. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's so yeah. many words within the theme of I like music. I like the music idea. 
I think I like there, the music. there is a lot of things. But you can paint to music in it. Mm -hmm. all that. Exactly. That's another good way to do it too. Painting to a particular piece of music. I do all the time or all, otherwise I'd go crazy. Yeah, me too. Okay. I've got to run. So are we okay. going to- uh, Oh, by the way- music. What's that, Kate? The I, last month I said something about uh, painting with John that's going to be on. I gave the wrong date. It's January 22nd and it's with John Lurie. Oh, I saw that. In fact, be, I picked up the date too. I saw that. Yeah, January 22nd. Yeah. Okay. I got that on my list though. Good. That looks like fun. It will be. Mm-hmm. Okay. Open, musical, and if you want to, you can pick a word and respond to that. Okay. And then, of course, you can do anything you want. The Debbie Dutch Beethoven's Fifth. Joe. What's that? You could do it to Beethoven's Fifth. And that oh, my God. A lot of deep. Uh, it should be to John Glass. He will get, he'll get you in the mood for abstract. <laughs> <laughs> Philip Glass or John Cage. Philip uh, Phil Glass, right. Dance John Cage. I love to paint to dance music. In fact, those words that I did. The uh -huh. background was like all disco music when I was there. Right. <laughs> all right. I think it's time. People have to go. This Adios. was wonderful. Adios. 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 Everybody stay healthy. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was terrific meeting everyone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi. You, Tom. I'm glad. Hey, Welcome Tom. to the group. Hey, group Joe. Welcome nice to job. the group, Sherry. Pat, you guys are all new, and this is great. Nice group. Enjoy yeah. it. Okay, thank you. Ciao. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Happy New Year. Bye. Bye. Thank Don't you. Don't buy it anywhere. Stay well, everybody. Yep.